My name is Eswa Roku Dossen. I'm not a sports enthusiast because when I was growing up, my mother did not allow me to play football. The, the only sports I do now is just a little jogging. My club that I support is Chelsea Football Club. Because when I was in England, precisely London, I lived near Stanford Bridge. Growing up for me was very exciting and very challenging. We used to go to the stream to fetch water, used to go to the forest to collect firewood for, for the family, and also leaves like our farm. We collect and bring to our mom to cook for us. We even collected mushrooms in the forest. We were not exposed to modern life, like getting electricity and all that. So we managed with the lantern that we had in the village. We had our own way of uh, toys. We used uh, bamboo to make some toys for us to, to drive on the road. We make noise like a motorcycle. And also we constructed telephone. Use uh, milk tin and rope to, uh, to construct telephone. We used to communicate with our friends. My father was a headmaster in the primary school, and my mother was a full-time housewife. She was not working. All was she was involved with sewing, seamstress in the village, and also farming. That was what she would and a little trading in uh, palm kennels, take to the market. We used to do a trade by butter. My mother would collect uh, cocoa yam and other uh, or cassava. Then they would go to the market and do trade by butter. She would exchange for other items like crayfish. And also my father was a disciplinarian that he must come for prayers by 5 a.m. He must not be caught using vulgar language. He, he must make sure that the, the house and the environment is clean every morning. Survival in the village was tough because medical facilities was not available. A local doctor come give us injection. And the needle will be stored in the bush. And God help us, we don't know the water they used to do the injection. We don't know where it came from. But we survived. So, and also nutrition. We were mainly carbohydrate, morning carbohydrate, afternoon carbohydrate, evening carbohydrate. So we do not have proper nutrition. Children were not allowed to eat eggs. Eggs were only for the adult. We didn't have light, we didn't have running water. Sometimes the streams would be dry, so you have to travel for a long distance to get water. But luckily for us in our village, we had a very nice stream. The water was very clean. Life in the village was hard. People were poor. Only privileged children were allowed to go to school. So for me, as a child, to go to primary school was a luxury because my father being a teacher knew that education is the very important. My, my primary school days were very eventful in the sense that I was very academically sound. That is, I used to pass my exams very well. And because of that, I was jumping classes. So I finished my primary school in 1959. But to go to 
to now go to the uh, second, secondary school, there was a hitch. My father was not able to send me to secondary school because already he had my cousin who was in the secondary school. Also, my stepmother was also in school. So because of that, there was no money for me to start secondary school immediately. So I had to wait for two years. And during this time, my father's colleague came to the house and asked me, where is your dad? I said, my dad is out. He said, okay, when your dad comes back, tell him to bring five pounds and also to give him a good. If not so, he will not put my name. People in my local government will be given scholarship by the Eastern Nigerian government. But God, as God will have it, my father now went to his colleague who was in charge of the scholarship board in Uyo division. And my father was told to bring a letter from my principal to back up my application. So we got that letter from my principal. I was the seventh in the exam. So through that man's operation, I was able to get scholarship in class one. That took me throughout my studies in my secondary school. After secondary school, I got employment to work in my village secondary school. That is 1970. That 1970, the Civil War ended. I did not have the finance. I couldn't go to the university in 1970. I had to work for 18 months to get some money ready before I could go to the university. I had uh, applied to Suka, applied to Ibadan, applied to Ife. With my father's advice, I chose UI. So when we resumed in uh, UI, I had uh, a tragedy took place. My father died. So I was very depressed. I was not happy. But God came to my aid. I had what they call indigent scholarship. Also, I had the scholarship I had applied for. So I had two scholarships in my year one. I was given bursary in year two, and that carried me throughout my undergraduate studies. After finishing my degree, the next port of call was for me to go abroad to study. I really wanted to go abroad, as we said earlier. Those things were very nice by that time. Government was giving scholarships to Nigerians, young Nigerians who are ambitious were given scholarships. So I applied to the federal government and I was awarded federal government scholarship. And also I got admissions in in Glasgow to go and read forensic biochemistry. Also got admission in Cardiff to go and read biomedical engineering. Also got admission in Oregon State University to go and read biochemistry. Also got admission in, in um, Russia to go and read public health. But I uh, I did not take up those scholarships. I took up the one of Unical because that one was very juicy. And they have to pay me my salary. My salary was running and also they paid my fees and all those. So as I said, God, God arranges things. I made up my mind that I will not marry any lady I will meet in London that is staying in London that I will not marry. Also, when I was growing up, 
I also said I will not marry anybody who is a nurse because of the bad uh, experience I got when I was a patient in a pediatric ward. So I knew my wife in Nigeria in the 70s when I worked in St. Margaret's Hospital. So when I went abroad and she came to England and I met her again, I decided to propose to her and she graciously accepted. That uh, idea of not marrying a nurse uh, left me. I did not even remember again. <laughs> so sometimes something you do not even bargain for. Nigeria then was very good. People were not many. And we had quality life, quality education. Quality, quality life in the sense that when I mean, you buy something, you know that this thing you buy is quality product. People were telling the truth. If you go to the hospital, you'll be treated well. If you go to the market, you say good goods, quality goods to buy. Education-wise, you have good teachers and we have good quality health sector. The doctors were committed, the nurses were committed. Everybody were committed in what they do. They were not looking at what they, they were paid because people were poorly paid. But the people who were there were sincere, they were committed. So they do their work very well. School was not disrupted. Lecturers did not get, uh, did not uh, tell students to give them some money before they pass them. We sat down and we studied because we knew that if we study very hard and get our degrees, that the, our future was guaranteed. Immediately you finish secondary school, you were employed. Immediately you finish in the university, you have a chance of getting a job. They will give you a job and give you a car. So we had a very good future. But now it is the reverse. I had four children, three boys and a girl. My first son, in of us, when he was a child, he used to be difficult during eating. So we now showed a cartoon to him, Tom and Jerry. Then he would settle down. Fun, fun, when he cries, I tell him, fun, fun, don't cry because the lion will catch you. Initially, he will stop crying. But after some time, he will say, where is the lion? <laughs> and we continue crying. So I used to laugh. When he was growing on the teen, teen, teenage age, he likes music. And subsequently, when we now went to Jamaica, he was exposed to the music world, which he is now practicing. My second son in Yabasi came out early, around eight months, and started working at seven months. And when he went to school, was very tiny, was very small. And in the house, he would drag the, the chair. And also he will uh, cause so much damage to the chairs. Because Nini used to go and stand with the pastor to preach. He used to preach. So his pastor friend is still around, Pastor Jonah. Nini used to stand with the pastor, throw out the Saturday night when other children were sleeping. We were there with the pastor till we, the, 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 from maybe around 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning, Nini was there. And Nini used to create a show. Like when one of my, uh, one of my 
boys who waited. Nini, Nini was not in the train, but he took over the shoe and dance, used to dance very well. That's why they call it Nini Udolf for social. He used to dance very well. But also very troublesome. Very troublesome. At school, he took his academics very seriously. So when we took them to, took him to Jamaica, he was also very good in at school. For Barcelona, my third son, he used to be very restrictive when he was a child. At school, he would play and play and sell his clothes, remove his uh, socks, and also he will um, fight at school. But as he grew up, became a little calm. When he was a, a boy, he used to involve himself in a, with computer, which at his age was able to understand the computer. And he was very dirty when he was in primary school, but now he's very clean, very neat. He dresses very well. In fact, he's one of the neatest of my children now. He's very neat now. Cleans the house, cleans his room. Even his when he was having his car, he wash his car every day. It during my daughter, she came in when we were expectant. And our expectation was fulfilled when she came. We all rejoiced, we all thank God for a change, because we were always having boys. So she came, he looks like my mom in some ways, but he used to talk very much when he was, he used to cry, cry very much, and she's a very responsible young lady. So I thank God for all my children that they have all been, because we train them in the Christian way and they, they have all imbibed the Christian tradition. They have all imbibed the Christian fashion. So I thank God for all of them. And we hope that God will continue to bless them. God will continue to keep them well and strong. God would God continue to keep them in the way of the Lord. Because nowadays, the young people are not paying attention to the things of God. Either they are in the cult or one thing or the other. But God has made my children to listen to the word of God, to imbibe the word of God and to put the Word of God in action. So they will also pass these Christian values to their children. Our parents pass these Christian values to us. So we, we also pass these Christian values to them. And we pray and hope that when they are parents, they will also pass the Christian values to their children. My wife is uh, Grace Eswell Dawson. She has been a pillar of strength to me. She has encouraged me. She has manned the home sector very, very well. I don't have to be thinking about this or that. She's a very hardworking lady and she's very enthusiastic about the family, especially about cleanliness. She's very much concerned about cleaning the house. Neatness, should I say neatness is a nickname. She likes, she likes a clean environment and she puts it into practice. Although sometimes 
she gets on my nerve. But I congratulate her for making the environment clean and conducive for us to live. Because people have been coming to give us kudos. Say, if you want cleanliness, go to uh, Grace or Dawson House. Her colleagues bear testimony of that. So I thank her for making, giving us a conducive environment by cleaning the house, by insisting that the house should be clean, especially fighting uh, insects, fighting ants, fighting wall giggles. So even on the road, she will tell women to remove blankets covering their children. So you also have women with children, especially young mothers who don't know their left from their right, also help them. So she's a very um, responsible woman, uh, wife. So I thank God for making her to be my wife. I hope she will continue to do that. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Isn't it, man? Amen. <laughs> <laughs>